Hey, just giving some tips on auto park and auto lane change in a Tesla Model 3. These are uh, part of the enhanced autopilot uh, before or now part of the full self-drive package. A lot of people claim auto park is useless and barely works. I disagree. You just need to know when and how to use it. Same thing with auto lane change. I use auto park almost every day when I get to work. Sure, it's faster to pull in head first, but that means you'll have to back out, which is usually a little slower. Also better if you're in a hurry to leave. Since cameras are now used in auto park, you can start a bit further than in the original implementation. That said, you still want to drive fairly close past the cars you want to park in between. In case you don't know, auto park doesn't use the lines as far as I know. It bases its parking location on adjacent cars. Uh, something, maybe a legacy from the ultrasonic days. So it's best to park between two cars. Since Auto Park won't pull forward initially to get a better starting location, you'll want to make sure you pulled forward enough that it can go in in one turn instead of a three point turn. Note the backup camera initially showed that I was past one car's parking line. From start to park, this took 26 seconds. Here's another example where I should have pulled in forward a bit more. Notice the car needs to do an extra maneuver. I would have incorporated the dash cam, but interestingly, it doesn't seem to save the clips during an auto park. Anyway, this time it took 42 seconds. Now this is a blast from the past. This was before I got my own Model 3. It was a rental from Trevels in Minneapolis back in June 2018. You can tell by my hand position, I wasn't exactly comfortable with the whole car doing its own thing yet. At this point, only ultrasonics were used, no cameras. I clearly could have pulled in forward more. In this case, it took about a minute, which seemed to be typical. Now some tips on auto lane change. I love autopilot and I'm happy with my uh, manual auto lane change. At this point, nav on autopilot initiated auto lane changes isn't really robust enough for Los Angeles traffic when it isn't relatively light. I've noticed on occasion cars in my blind spot don't always show up in the vector display, so make sure to do a shoulder check and or visual blind spot check with a rear view camera. Auto lane change works best when both lanes are going about the same speed and you have a big gap, just like a manual lane change. So unlike nav on AP, I wait until the coast is clear before I initiate, or try to. In this instance, I was switching to a faster lane and the gap closed up, so it took 14 seconds, with about 7 seconds of the actual lane changing once the gap opened up. Here I'm about to pass this truck and initiate it, and that worked pretty, uh, pretty well. It took 13 seconds since I had the signal, but only 8 seconds for the actual lane change once it determined the coast was clear. Giant gap, almost instant lane change. Giant gap. Slipping behind the truck, the car slows a bit and gets in fine. It took about 15 seconds. Clearly, it works fairly well when traffic is going at a good speed. That said, you do need to keep vigilant. In this example, this was an auto lane change uh, initiated under nav on autopilot, but could have just easily been a manually initiated one. Here I'm coming up to my exit, and I need to change over two lanes. Note the black SUV. Slow motion here. It's not showing up yet on the vector map. You can't see it in this camera, but I can clearly see it using my eyeballs uh, behind the uh, A-pillar. It was going into the same lane I was. I tricked back to avoid a possible collision. Maybe autopilot would have canceled, but I wasn't waiting to find out. Now, I find when traffic is slow, say 20 miles per hour or lower, relative lane speeds are inconsistent. And auto lane change, in this case initiated by nav on IP, doesn't do so well. 
It hesitated, so I took over. Same thing on this next example. Right after I started signaling, the gap closed, the car slowed down, leaving a big gap in front of me, so I took over to manually change lanes further up. After this is just more examples of the auto lane change in the same stretch of the 405 South Freeway in Los Angeles that I showed earlier. The ideal big gap took six or seven seconds to change over. By another seven second lane change. And again, you can see auto lane change is quite functional, even in moderate traffic. Just know its limitations. At this point, a fire truck, the bane of Teslas everywhere, creeps into my lane, and I take over to avoid it. At this point, I don't bother engaging autopilot and just continue manually to my exit. Thanks for watching. Post any questions or comments below. If you do decide to get a Tesla, you'll want to get a referral code to get the thousand miles of free supercharging. If you use mine, I would appreciate it. Take it easy.